Alec issues are everyone's issues because they impact the daily lives of all Americans. Government accountability is a nonpartisan, top-line issue across the states. And our next guest is an expert at finding, yes, finding out those facts and sharing them with us. Founder of OpenBooks.com, OpenTheBooks.com, Adam Angievsky, and it's not spelled that way, but that's how it's pronounced, has a lifelong resume of work for transparency, focusing on rooting out corruption in education and government, and frequently noting that in God we trust, in politicians we must audit. Please join me in welcoming Adam Angievsky. Lisa, thank you very much for that kind introduction. Members, guests, supporters, elected officials, thank you for this opportunity to share our mission and vision. We can't make America great again unless we make America accountable again. And that accountability is going to start where we live in our own local units of government. Over the course of the last 20 years, the size, scope, and power of government at every level has grown substantially. And I know no better example of that than right here in the state of California. Who knew, who knew that lifeguards in Los Angeles County can make up to $392,000? I guess life's a beach if you're an LA County lifeguard. Launched in my column at Forbes and published on the editorial page, the Wall Street Journal. Our auditors at OpenTheBooks.com put Baywatch on Paywatch. We actually found 82 lifeguards in Los Angeles County made over $200,000 in the year before the pandemic. Seven of those lifeguards made more than $300,000. We found a single lifeguard over the course of a five-year period cleaned off over $600,000 in overtime pay alone. And it's not only about the cash compensation, you know it's also about the benefit packages and the public provided pension program. 30 years and out, you could be a lifeguard in LA County and retire on 80% of your salary at age 55. So you and I, we have a lot of work to do. As many of you know, I'm from Illinois and it is the Super Bowl of corruption. Our reputation on corruption is legendary. At one recent period, we actually had four of our last nine governors in the federal penitentiary. They served time. 2013 was a particular low for my state. We had two governors in the federal pen at the same time, one from each party, Republican George Ryan and Democrat Rod Blagojevich. And I remember when, in 2011, one of our most famous citizens ran for mayor of Chicago. His name is Rahm Emanuel. And Rahm ran on a good government platform. Rahm promised to end the historic culture of corruption in City Hall. He promised to end pay-to-play. And you know what pay-to-play is. It's when a city vendor gives a campaign donation and expects a city contract. And sure enough, when Rahm Emanuel won for office, he instituted an executive order banning pay to play. In 2015, when Rahm was running for re-election, I got a call from Fox News headquarters in Midtown Manhattan from the Emmy Award-winning journalist John Stossel. And Stossel asked me, Adam, can you fact check Rahm Emanuel's campaign promise? And I said, yes, we can. We took the city of Chicago checkbook, we matched it up with Rahm Emanuel's campaign donor disclosures, and here's what we found. 600 city vendors gave Rahm Emanuel $7 million in campaign cash, and those vendors had received in city payments $2 billion. In, in God we trust our Illinois politicians, we must audit. <laughs> I am hopeful and optimistic about our future, besides the corruption in Illinois and across the country. And here's why. In the last 5,000 years of human history, you and I have been given the greatest gift. We recognize that our rights, they don't come from government, they come from God, and we instituted a government to secure our rights. 
and our founders knew that the people needed the tools to be able to hold that government accountable. They understood the power of transparency and they wrote it into our founding documents. And it's Article 1, Section 9 of the United States Constitution and here's what it says. That a regular statement and account of the receipts and expenditures of all public money shall be published from time to time. And today, it's the internet age. There is a clear interpretation. Post every dime online in real time, open the books. And that's our mission at OpenTheBooks.com, to take every dime taxed and spent at every level of government, federal, state, and local, capture it, and put it on our website so everybody can see it, so people can follow the money. To that end, last year we filed 40,000 Freedom of Information Sunshine requests, and we successfully captured nearly $8 trillion of federal, state, and local spending. Nobody has ever filed 40,000 sunshine requests in the history of the country. This is what our database is comprised of. For the first time in history, we compiled a record of virtually every single public employee salaries and pensions, 25 million records from across the country. Checkbooks. At the federal level, we've captured the federal checkbook all the way back to the year 2001. In the states, we've captured 49 out of 50 checkbooks. We're only missing California. And then at the municipal level, we, we've captured nearly 15,000 line-by-line vendor checkbooks at the local level across the country. We do this so citizens can follow the money. We not only open the books, we audit the books, and the audits make national news. I want to share with you two stories about how our data has been used recently, just over the last couple of months. First, at the local level. I got a call two days ago out of a whistleblower out of New Orleans. He worked for the New Orleans Police Department. And he told me the story that he knew something wasn't right within his unit of government. And he came to OpenTheBooks.com to look at the payroll of the police department. He knew that a New Orleans police sergeant has a base salary of $80,000. Yet, on, posted on our website, police sergeants were making up to $200,000. This kicked off an investigation. It published in the major newspapers, aired on the local television programs. And here's what they found. Abuse within the police detail system. They actually found a police officer working two police details at the same time. A news organization put a camera on one of the houses and taped a police officer while he was working a police detail, walking his dog and taking out the trash. One police officer was supposed to be working a police detail behind the wheel of his patrol car, but he was actually down the street at the local racetrack behind the wheel of his race car. This has led, just last week, to 26 New Orleans police officers being suspended from police detail work while the investigation continues and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, are at stake. This is the power of the transparency revolution. We believe transparency revolutionizes U.S. public policy and politics. Here's an example from just a couple of months ago of how our federal data, how we used at OpenTheBooks.com our federal data. When the Taliban was overrunning Afghanistan, our auditors immediately wanted an answer to the question of how much U.S. taxpayer provided U.S. military gear was potentially being left behind. And quickly, we launched this story. We broke this story on a national and international basis. We quantified $82.9 billion of U.S. military gear and training that had been provided since 2001 over a 20-year period to the Afghan National Security Forces and the Afghan National Army. We, as the Taliban took over the entire country, they captured the entire war chest of that gear. And we turned the Taliban into a major U.S. arms dealer for the next decade. Here is a breakdown of what we left behind. 600,000 weapons. That includes 
350,000 rifles, M4s and M16s, 65,000 machine guns, 25,000 grenade launchers, 2,500 howitzers and mortars. The howitzer is a modern day cannon that can take out a road, a bridge, or an airport runway. We left behind 75,000 military vehicles. That's 50,000 tactical vehicles, 25,000 Humvees. Each Humvee, on average, costs the American taxpayer roughly $92,000 a piece. We left behind up to 1,000 mine-resistant vehicles. Each of those costs between $300,000 and three-quarters of a million dollars a piece. If we ever go back into Afghanistan, we have lost the nighttime advantage. We left behind 16,000 pieces of night vision and thermal imaging devices in Afghanistan. Night vision goggles are expensive, between $2,500 and $5,000 a piece. We left behind thermal imaging rifle, rifle, sniper rifle sites that cost up to $36,000 a piece. If we ever go back into Afghanistan, we've lost the nighttime advantage and it's going to cost us in terms of our military lives and our national treasure. We launched our findings internationally with three minutes live on the BBC World News, domestically in my column at Forbes and on Fox News. Fox News ran that segment eight times and even the New York, even the Washington Post was hyperlinking to our website with their fact checker as they fact checked politicians and their statements on the weaponry left behind. Now the Bible says the truth will set you free. It doesn't say the narrative will set you free. But at the time that we were running this information out, the Biden administration started to run the narrative that this was the most successful extraction of a military force in U.S. history. And it wasn't true. We used hard data and government audit reports to hold the Biden administration accountable for their hasty exit. My name is Adam Angievsky, and we have a lot of work to do. I believe that transparency transforms U.S. public policy and politics, and today I'm going to invite you to embrace the transparency revolution. You know, I was thinking about this as I prepared the talk this morning. Just a few miles from here over on Coronado Island, the Navy SEALs do their training. They are doing the hard work. Our work is hard, but it is also the easy work by comparison. I'm going to give you three simple steps on how to embrace the power of transparency. Number one, this is really easy, open the books. Post all your financial information proactively on your own websites as an elected official. Open up everything, your line-by-line -line vendor spending, your payroll, the bonuses that you divvy out, the credit card spending, put the statements up there. Embrace sunshine, walk arm in arm with your citizenry, show them you've got nothing to hide, Citizens want to see the money. It's a 99% issue. Show them the money. Do not act like California. The state controller has rejected our Freedom of Information Act request for the state checkbook. And California is the only state that doesn't provide this. She rejected our request saying that she couldn't quote unquote her words locate any of the 50 million transactions that she paid last year. We're not buying it. She's actually made the argument in court. She does a balancing test. She said the public interest, the public interest served by not disclosing the record clearly outweighs the public interest in disclosure of the record. And that begs the question, do we have a representative republic if our representatives hide their spending from the people and then claim that they're doing it for our own good? Instead of embracing the California way, brace the Utah way. The Utah State Auditor, John Frugal Dougal, He's probably the most transparent elected official in the entire country. He's literally put every dime online in as real time as possible at every level of Utah government, even including school districts. And good policy is good politics.
John Frugal Dugal has won statewide elections in the state of Utah with more votes ever than anybody else in the history of the state, and that includes Senators Orrin Hatch and Mitch Romney. Good policy is good politics. Here's the second simple way you can embrace the transparency revolution. Declare war on waste. In 2019, at, the, at USA Today and the Wall Street Journal, our organization at OpenTheBooks.com, in conjunction with our honorary chairman, Dr. Tom Coburn, we ran double-facing page advertisements as an open letter to President Trump, urging him to embrace the transparency revolution and declare war on waste. We had the letter, the second page was 100 examples of taxpayer abuse. Here are just three of those examples. Number one, NASA spent $1 million to prepare the nation's religions for the discovery of extraterrestrial life. Here's the next one. Health and Human Services doled out a grant to fund sex education for California prostitutes. Who could probably teach the class? <laughs> and speaking of prostitutes, the Ivy League got a lot of federal grants. <laughs> <laughs> Cornell University took a million dollar grant for a study where it hurts the most to be stung by a bee. Turns out it's the nostril. <laughs> now you're, as an elected official, I know what you're thinking in your seat. You're, you're, looking, you're thinking back to your budget. You're thinking, I don't, Adam, I don't have waste in my budget. Uh, certainly, I'm not scared or fear extraterrestrials. God forbid if our public money is going to prostitutes and we're not funding bee studies. Please take a deeper dive. We've never investigated a unit of government and found things running perfectly well. Identify your waste, cap your waste, and cut your waste. Defend your taxpayers. Come in and do more, run a leaner unit of government. We think it's a winner also at the ballot box. Good policy is good politics. Here's a third simple way you can embrace the transparency revolution. Read the bill. If you're a legislator, don't vote for any bill that you have not read. We need a grassroots revolution in this country, starting with school boards, county boards, state legislators to read the bill. Read it on your social media. Tell everyone that you find in the legislation. Let's galvanize the public policy on this and take it to Congress. Aren't you sick and tired of the omnibus, minibus, COVID aid spending bills that are thousands of pages? Nobody's reading those bills. The second COVID bill was 5,400 pages. The first Reiteration of the social human infrastructure bill was 2,400 pages. When's the last time you've read 10 books? We read that bill and we found on page 168 Biden's vaccine mandate enforcement mechanism. You remember the press conference in September where the president said that he wanted to enforce a vaccine mandate on private employers with 100 or more employees. We found the enforcement mechanism through OSHA, through the regulatory state, with fines hiked 10 times, up to $700,000. They're serious about their edicts. They want to bankrupt your private business if you don't comply, and they're putting it in these big omnibus pieces of legislation. Mandate enforcement mechanism. You remember the press conference in September where the president said that he wanted to enforce a vaccine mandate on private employers with 100 or more employees. We found the enforcement mechanism through OSHA, through the regulatory state, with fines hiked 10 times, up to $700,000. They're serious about their edicts. They want to bankrupt your private business if you don't comply, and they're putting it in these big omnibus pieces of legislation.
you know, they're simple ideas, but they're necessary. Our founders had genius in transparency. Transparency is the best disinfectant. And the people right now will be happy if you implement just these three simple steps. I want to give you a closing example of just how powerful this is for an American politician. At OpenTheBooks.com, our honorary chairman was the late Dr. Tom Coburn, the U.S. Senator from Oklahoma. And, Oklahoma, and Tom Coburn embraced transparency. He partnered across the aisle with Barack Obama and opened up the federal checkbook. He used the Senate rules to stop thousands of wasteful pork barrel government expenditures was when he was in the U.S. Senate, and he earned the nickname Dr. No. What he couldn't stop, he embarrassed his colleagues. He did a waste book report every single year. Dr. Coburn, when he was leaving the Senate, see, he didn't, he didn't really like being a politician. He liked delivering babies back home in his small town where he delivered 3,000 babies. So when Coburn was leaving the Senate, he gave all of us a warning. And here's the story. He said, on the law of large numbers, sometimes when you're delivering a baby, things don't go according to plan. And you know there's a problem when the baby's heartbeat, which is normally 130 to 140 beats a minute, drops to 50 or 60 beats a minute. He said, you know you have a problem. You have three minutes to make a decision. You have to take action. You have three minutes to save the life of the mother, to save the life of the baby. And he said, you've got options. You can go for the forceps and pull the baby out. You can go for the vacuum extractor. You can put the mother up on the table, cut a hole in her belly, and take the baby by C-section. But the point is, you have three minutes. You must take action. And Coburn said, this is the three-minute moment for America. On wasteful spending, on national debt, we have three minutes. This is our three-minute moment. If we don't take action, we're going to lose the baby. Thank you. Join the transparency revolution. I look forward to walking arm-in-arm -arm with you as we fight these battles together. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs>